we appreciate the fact that you have joined us. If you are just joining us now, good morning. Uh, you know, as you know, by the way, we stream the show live every day uh, on our website, americasvoicenow.org. On the right side, you roll, scroll down about uh, one and a half scrolls, and you'll see on the right side a big button that Stevie Wonder and Helen Keller couldn't miss. It says, click here to watch now or watch live. And uh, we encourage you to do that. It gives an opportunity for folks to listen to the program that uh, are not in, in a radio station that picks up our show. And um, it also gives you an opportunity to uh, sometimes put a face with the name. I know I've got a face made for radio, but I can't help that. Um, the issue here of what we were talking about in our first segment of government uh, replacement, if you will, is one that we should probably explore a little deeper because uh, I had a caller in between the break that, that you know brought out the issue that if you try to replace a six-year senator with a whole group of six-year senators, you know you lose the concept of one-third of all the senators rolling over every two years, which is, is understandable. And so um, the simple solution to that is to, at base minimum, break it into two uh, because you've got two senators in every state and so one of those senators will run for a period of two years, and another one would run for a period of two years. And uh, then none would be elected for that initial six-year window. Um, the House of Representatives uh, come up every two years, uh, but also in a rotating uh, axis so that not, not, every, uh, not everyone is, is all out at the same time. The idea of of uh where we where we are going right now is that we're on an unsustainable path politically economically ethically and morally and so and when i say morally i'm not talking about substituting you know some groups or organizations moral standing so i'm not talking about things like abortion and i'm not talking about things like civil rights and all the nonsense there i'm talking about the standard morals that apply to everyone which is we don't lie, we don't cheat, we don't steal, we don't commit murder, we don't rob, rape, pillage the neighborhood for our own personal aggrandizement or our own selfish means. And so, and unfortunately, that's where what, what our Congress does to us today. They are raping and pillaging our nation for their own personal, you know, there's only so many seats at the table, right? And at some point, this government knows that this is going to collapse, this whole system that we have, Financially, will probably be the trigger that will collapse, that will bring about political collapse, because um, you, a government can't operate without financial soundness, and so that is most likely to initiate what would be the close of our republic in terms of a constitutional republic. In other words, a financial collapse would inherently necessitate a political collapse in the sense that the republic would evaporate and we would become a totalitarian dictatorship initiated by at first martial law and then you know these emergency measures that would be put in place we've seen done over and over and over and over and over again in every totalitarian society and, and system you know mike raises his hand you know in the in the german salute and of course we know that that occurred there but it's also happened in in russia it also happened in china it's also happened in every totalitarian government that exists um, the government collapses uh, they put in place these draconian uh, requirements and put in place a uh, an emergency set of measures that give government absolute power for the will for the good of the people right we know what's best for you and so the problem is that we know that our existing system can't continue inevitably. And uh, we, are, we have reached a point where we're beyond what you would call salvage in the, in the political sense of things. You know, I played a video for you guys the other day, and I know you, got the, you, know, you only got the audio part of it, but Mark Dice is a guy who was out there on a boardwalk in uh, California. And he was literally walking around with a clipboard just to show the the state of decline of American civics. And he was walking around with this clipboard and asking people to sign a petition to repeal the Bill of Rights. That's exactly right, to repeal the Bill of Rights. 
And it took him three quarters of a pad full of signatures before one guy said, wait, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. That's not right. It took him three quarters of a page of signatures before one person has had the the courage and the wisdom to say, you're out of your mind, dude. Which tells us that the deplorable state of the understanding of, of American people. I mean, they're unknowledgeable about who's in power, what that power means, and what it means to them. And, you know, there are a lot of, of examples of our founders telling us what to watch for. In other words, giving us all the clues that we need to understand exactly how much danger we're in as a republic if we fail to monitor and keep an eye on our, on our you know, our political power. And we have been indoctrinated in our school systems, in our educational systems, by that, that it's not a box anymore, but by that, that flat panel of idiocy that pumps indoctrination into your mind all day long. To, to believe that government is always working on your behalf, has your best interest at heart, and that you should blindly trust them I mean, Obama came out to that university group and he said, you'll hear people saying to you that tyranny lurks around every corner. Ignore those voices. That is in 100% diametric opposition to what our founders said, which is that tyranny does lurk around every corner. (laughs) And they should know. In fact, Noah Webster... In, in 1787 said, but what is tyranny? Or how can a free people be deprived of their liberties? Tyranny is the exercise of some power over a man, which is not warranted by law or necessary for the public safety. A people can never be deprived of their liberties while they retain in their own hands a power superior to any other power in the state. Now, he was referencing there the Second Amendment and why it was critical that the Second Amendment exist. But, you know, you have to realize that our founders were more cognizant in their time about tyranny in government and how it, how it was applicable. In fact, Jefferson, Jefferson is probably the most uh, visible of our, of our founders. And he was very prolific writer and prolific speaker and a true uh, patriot of the concepts of America. In fact, it was it was Jefferson who insisted by the way that the original 13 states as we as we included western expansion and he sent Lewis and Clark off on the expedition to, you know, find a waterway to the western coast. It was his insistence that when those states came on They weren't vassal states, but they were independent states with co-equal powers to the 13 original states that became, or the 13 original colonies that became the states. In other words, any new state that joined came on as a co-equal partner, not as a vassal state, right? And Jefferson was the first one to recognize the problem of the average Joe six-pack keeping up with what's going on around him. He said, the people cannot be... I'm sorry, the people cannot be all and always well informed. The part which is wrong will be discontented in proportion to the importance of the facts they misconceive. If they remain quiet under such misconceptions, it is a lethargy. Now understand what he said there. If they remain quiet under such misconception, it is a lethargy, the forerunner of death to the public liberty. We have had 13 states independent for 11 years. There has been one rebellion. That was the Shays Rebellion, by the way. That comes to one rebellion in a century and a half for each state. 
What country before ever existed a century and a half without a rebellion? Let them take arms. The remedy is to set them right as to facts, pardon, and pacify them. What signify a few lives lost in a century or two? The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is freedom's natural manure. You see, he understood what most Americans today have had beaten, whipped, or coerced out of their minds. And that is that we are the owners of government, that this nation belongs to us, not to them, and that it is imperative and part and parcel of our responsibility and our role and our duty as beneficiaries of this republic that we live in, that we have an active role that we play in its day-to-day -day operation. This idea that you can vote and that you've done your duty is a misnomer. In fact, it's a fallacy. Hell, you can't even get people to vote. Showing, voting is showing up on time for work. You can't but even get people to do that. You can't even get them to do that. And yet they'll willingly sign a petition to repeal the Bill of Rights. How insane is that? Who would sign their own death warrant by saying, I'm willing to repeal the Bill of Rights? What is the Bill of Rights? They were the first ten amendments to the Constitution. Right? The, and, co the compromise. And remember something. That the citizenry would not allow the Constitution to be ratified and become the Constitution until those ten amendments had been written and committed to by the new government. They demanded that the Bill of Rights be included before they would be willing to say, I'm in agreement with this. Because the initial Constitution was, while it gave some level of protection, where it failed was it made, it made our government a democracy, but not a republic. And the difference is stark. A democracy is majority rule. And we know from past history that every country that has ever been a democracy has ended in bloodshed and complete and total annihilation. Not one single democracy has ever existed. Not for any period of time. The difference between a democracy and a constitutional republic is the difference between night and day. While the majority has the opportunity to vote and make their statements heard, the principles of a republic protect the minority from the abuses and the whims of the majority. So just because the majority says we're going to legalize burglary doesn't mean that it's lawful because it's still illegal to burglarize the smallest minority, one. You. Me. I wonder how many people realize that Hitler was voted into office. By 90% of Austria, I might add. Forget Germany. By, by, because Germany was in their own, you know, Germany was in their own financial crisis, right? And it was, again, it was, a, it was an emergency powers act that he became chancellor under. And then he went in and invaded and invaded uh, Austria, but it was really a soft invasion because he was voted in by the Austrians. And he was voted in, by the way, by 90% of the Austrians. And the reason he was voted in is because they looked at Germany, their neighbor, and said, wow, this guy's done some amazing things over there. He's restored their economy, he's put them all to work. They failed or neglected to recognize the fact that the jobs that they all had were building war weapons, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody was busy building arms and tanks and guns and bullets and, right? Nobody was involved in 
real true enterprise that wasn't imperialistically related. But anyway, that, that I digress. The point is that they what they were doing was looking at their neighbor and saying, the grass is far greener on that side of the fence, and we want some of that. Austria was embroiled in their own economic collapse. And so they willingly voted in Hitler at 90% of the, of the electorate. Immediately when he came in, he started soup kitchens. That was the first thing he did. Feed them. How do you engender their loyalty? Fill their bellies. Uh, we do it here. It's just done with a plastic card. It's done with card. an EBT card. Yeah. So he bought, their, he bought their allegiance initially with food, and then he began to immediately institute all kinds of changes in their society. He began to take away the rights of parents to dictate and determine their own children's future, what schools they could go to, what kind of religious practices they could have. And that and that's being played out in this country right now. We see it every day. Now there's a family of there is a family of Germans over here who brought their kids over here, yep. okay, because they wanted to be able to homeschool them. And homeschooling is not allowed in Germany. It's a feder- it's a felony in Germany. And, and what's amazing to me is that this law is a law that was passed when Hitler was in charge of Germany. This this law that does not allow for homeschooling. Yet Germany keeps it on the books. Right. And, it, and we Since have, then. Yeah. And there's a family here in the U.S. now that brought their kids here so they could homeschool them. And the current administration is trying to send them back to Germany. Right. They will not allow them. They will not grant them asylum. And they will not they're allow saying, them legal say, status. For the record, folks, so you understand what they're talking about. They're saying that that's not enough persecution to grant this German family asylum. That's what it comes down to. And that's a determination by, of all people, whom? Eric, the traitor, Holder. My favorite scum. We're so proud. We're so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. I I wish somebody would. uh, uh, 50,000 people a year are killed on our nation's highways, okay? (laughs) There's a chance. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, the only problem is that Eric Holder doesn't drive himself. Uh, <laughs> some accidents are really bad. Okay. I'll tell you, the problem here is that, and by the way, now that Napolitano has vacated her seat, the odds of uh, everybody's waving on that one, but i got to tell you that she was the heir apparent for Eric Holder's seat if he ever resigned. As could you imagine Janet Holder going from DHS director over to the attorney general? <laughs> I'll tell you, there's a lot of people in... A uh, more incomprehensible scenario I could not envision. There's, but, a, there's a lot of people in DHS today that are doing the wave. Okay? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But the only problem is we don't know who's going to come in, and, you know, we may end up with something yeah. far worse than what we started with. Yeah, better the devil you know? Well, no. Actually, I don't agree with that principle. I, I do, I do, I am grateful that she's gone. Um, uh, but you might not be here in a month. Good luck. You might not be. Good luck to the, uh, the to the State University of California. Uh, God rest your souls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that you got dictator Janet in your uh, as the head of your university system, what a what an unbelievable mistake that was. But anyway, hey, what can Brown do for you? Janet Napolitano takes over the entire University of California system. What could go wrong? (laughs) That's what we said in California after the last election. What can Brown do for you? You know, it's it's almost like at this point, California has just become an indoctrination system. It's like the first massive FEMA camp. (laughs) But, you know, you know, the interesting thing, Mike, is that politically, if you get if you get north a couple of counties from San Francisco, oh yeah, the they entire want, north end they of want California, to be northern California yeah. as an independent state. Yeah, the whole that whole end of California is totally different than, and it's the same thing in New York. When you get north of Albany, right? They want to be New York North. Yeah, northern New York. Yeah, yeah, I get it. In North Colorado, by the way, they want to split off and secede away from Colorado proper and become their own state. Anyway, look, the simple point is this. What we have now is an unsustainable path. We have an unsustainable government. 
We have an unsustainable society. Unsustainable debt. We have unsustainable debt. We have unsustainable international policy. We can't continue this policy. We have unsustainable international surveillance that even our allies are kicking up their heels about, even if it's only in a faux outrage. But wait a minute. But we're building a facility to allow us to sustain it. It's unsustainable right now, but we're building the facility to allow us to sustain it. Let me tell you something. That's one of about 23. Is that right? Yeah. It's just the latest one. And it's our tax money paying for it. Isn't that, isn't that a beautiful thing? Well, for the record, this thing has so many, so many computers in there that they are, they are running like some billion processors or something like that. It, it's the equivalent of 23 times the supercomputer powers of the world uh, well, wait, 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 located wait. into one facility. Let's not go down the computer road because I was listening to you talking about computers on the air yesterday, okay? And it was oh, with like, Dave? And I, <laughs> yeah, and I understood, okay, about every third word in the sentences, okay? And it was like, is the... <laughs> okay, that was the only part of all that conversation I understood. You were talking about Lennox, and, 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 and first I thought you were talking about air conditioning units and stuff, and then you are talking about all this other stuff, and, 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 the, and the acronyms were flying, and I was like, what in the are they talking about? <laughs> Holy moly. And, and, and then he was talking about some kind of computer software that was like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Virtual wear. Yeah, but then it was like something else because it was like a takeoff of something else, and it was Microsoft Hyper V. Yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. See, <laughs> see. I got no. I got no idea. All right, guys, we got to take a break. It's uh, seven thirty in the morning. I've been up since four. I'm on my second cup of Java. Otherwise, you guys would be hearing. Um. Uh, you're listening to America's Voice. You guys are cutting into my commercial time here. You're listening to America's Voice Now. You can find us on the web at America's Voice Now. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. You can find this and every other program that we do uh, recorded and posted up to YouTube at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Basically, remember America's Voice Now and you got it covered. We'll be right back. West Plains, Missouri, it's KBMV Birch Tree, the Ozark's Ozark's best best news news talk. Most of us will agree that a toothbrush and toothpaste are very low-cost items when compared to major dental repair work. We just know that it's much less painful to maintain with good dental hygiene and checkups than let things go and see what happens. The same is true with vehicle maintenance. Following recommended fluid maintenance schedules and replacing filters before a problem develops is much more cost-efficient than dealing with a transmission or engine breakdown. Stop by or call Don's Auto Service to schedule the services recommended for your vehicle, 1618 Porter Wagner Boulevard or 417-256-2752. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. The George Zimmerman case now in the hands of six women who've been sequestered for 15 days. The jury began their work yesterday after hearing closing arguments from both sides. Prosecutors tried to convince this jury that Zimmerman is a liar, though the defense insists prosecutors proved nothing. Both Zimmerman's and Martin's families are expected to stay close to the courthouse waiting for a verdict. Fox Radio's Evan Brown in Sanford, Florida, a victory for anti-abortion activists in Texas. After hours of sometimes angry debate. There being 19 ayes and 11 nays, House Bill 2 is finally passed. Congratulations, Senator. The bill bans most abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy. Governor Rick Perry says he'll sign it into law. Opponents say it'll close all but five abortion clinics in Texas. Fox Radio's Steve Knight. The measure also only allows abortions in surgical centers. Fox News, we report, you decide. There's one man on this earth who really, truly gets it. I was never into this democracy project. I'm into the American project, just like the founders. The American project is this. We take steps overseas, military steps, that are intended to preserve America, preserve our allies, 
and in some cases that are extraordinary, really touch the soul of the nation. Yes, humani- humanitarian steps too. Weeknights from 5 till 8, Mark Levin on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071. Are you looking to save money? Did you know that in the last 20 years, interest rates have never been this low? That's why you should make the smart call today to West Plains Savings and Loan to start your home mortgage. Just imagine how much money you'll save. Key word is save, as in savings and loan. Your loan starts here and stays here. Never would it be sold to a secondary lender. Call today, 256-3042. That's 256-3042. West Plains Savings and Loan. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. From the Point Weather Center for this morning, we'll kick off the weekend with sunshine and a high of 86. The other party cloudy tonight at 60. Sunday should be a mostly sunny day with a high of 86. Monday will start the week with a partly sunny day or high 87. Again, the high for today, 86 under sunny skies. And I'm Rod Tanner. And for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. Get on the fast track to fall enrollment at Missouri State University West Plains College Express Tuesday, July 23rd at 6 p.m. at the Liebeyer Technology Center. College Express will give prospective students the opportunity to explore educational options at Missouri State West Plains and complete many of the processes needed for enrollment in just one evening. It's not too late to enroll for the fall semester, so make plans to attend College Express. To register for the July 23rd event or for more information, call 255-7955. Ba 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 boom. We're back. All right. So I, I think the issue, and, and I want to wrap this this segment up today because I want to the next hour segment. I really want to talk about this uh, transatlantic partnership. The issue here has got to be one where, and, and please don't misunderstand what I say, folks, when I say this, that I, I'm just throwing out this kernel of a concept. And it needs revision, it needs refinement, it needs steady hands, lots of planning, lots of coordination, lots of brilliant minds seeking answers to the problems that it poses. Logistically, politically, this is a dangerous landscape and a difficult one to maneuver in. And our job as patriots is no different than that same, that same swamp that was slogged through by our forefathers, by the founders of this country. Do you think they didn't have the same logistical questions and problems, Mike? No. I, I, I agree. I mean, it's just that when I think of the enormity of it, uh, <clears throat> at times it just becomes a little bit I, uh, overwhelming. I, I understand that, but I mean, it was, it, it was no different for them than it is for us now. We have the same challenges that they had. I mean, you know, maybe the physic the physics of it is a little bit different, but the issues are the same. Yeah. How do you start a government, separate yourself from a previous government from whence all of your authority, all of your monetary systems, all of your, you know, for all intents and purposes, all of the nation's uh, principles, ideas, and, and decisions come from? You know, it's like cutting yourself adrift and saying, I'm going to make it on my own in this sea. Right. Well, and, and I think that a lot of people, um, a, a lot of people who have, you know, worked for decades and always tried to do the right thing, have always voted, have, have done their civic duties, have volunteered in their communities and that kind of stuff. When you talk about a lot of people that are bedrock people in their community, it's really hard for them to wrap their head around um, being disobedient to the government, quote unquote disobedience. And and you know, I, I disagree. Term- I don't think it's hard for them to understand and grasp the concept of disobedience. I think what they fear is the loss of all which they've spent their entire lives working to compile. Well, and, and I, I submit and, and posit that that is a selfish position. I understand it. But I'm also, because I stand to lose too. But my point is this. At some point, we have to recognize that this is bigger than ourselves. That this is bigger than our own personal interests. That this is bigger than our own survival. That this is bigger than our own economic long-term longevity. We may all die as paupers. But I can tell you this. Under tyranny, we're going to die as paupers anyway. 
but with chains upon our ha- on our hands and lash marks and scars upon our backs. I got to tell you, I, I got to think about it. I got to think about that because you know I'm invested. I get I'm, it. I'm invested. Okay. I get it. And the those... thing and the thing that irritates me about it, okay, is all of those years spent in service as a public servant to the people, okay, with the expectation that that after all that sacrifice, and there was lots of it, okay, that there would be, okay, a good ending to that. It's really hard. Okay? So are you going to be less disappointed when the ending comes with you in chains? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying that you're, you're, you're saying I need time to think about the idea that everything I've put forth my entire life for with the promise that there would be remuneration at the end, that I would have a pension, that I could live my life in retirement and comfortably, is all, will, would all be gone for you to knowingly overthrow the, the system we're in right now, peacefully as, as recommended, right? On the flip side of the fence... I say to you, and I I submit this to all of you, that same security you're expecting is, one, already not guaranteed by the system we have. Well, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. No, but but listen, come on. You've got to recognize that in the the financial condition we're in, you're not going to get it anyway. Who are you kidding? And the problem is that most Americans, until until the truth is staring them in the face and their checks start to bounce... They're not going to be cognizant or willing to recognize the true depths of the depravity that we've fallen into as a nation. Well, I think what I'm saying is that a a lot of people will go and a lot of people will show up not because they expect it to be completely replaced, but because they expect that the people who are our current representatives will sit up and reform their behavior. That's not enough. They can't do that. Well, that's not acceptable, and I'll tell you why. Well, no, you, because what you're sitting there, and you're going to try and tell me that that you can take that you can take an inherent pathological liar, and that's everyone who is currently sitting in Congress right now, and everyone who's in this administration, and that because you've applied pressure, suddenly you can believe that they're going to begin to tell the truth. No, and they're no, going to no. start to back down from where they've been and the unconstitutional laws that they've emplaced upon us. No, no. I mean, my point is, let me tell you something. All right. America, if you really are deeply concerned about your pension and about your Social Security and, and all of the things that you have invested your life into developing, let me tell you how to preserve it. And let me be really blunt and candid. If we stopped spending money on foreign nations' aid, if we stopped spending literally hundreds of of billions of dollars a year on boondoggle crony capitalistic giveaway projects to this administration and every other administration's friends and benefactors, if we as a nation stopped spending money on wasteful abuses of our own citizens and spending our way into oblivion so that we could oppress ourselves, we would have more than enough money to take care of that which we really, truly should be taking care of, care of, which is the commitments we've made to our own, our own citizens. You mean like F-16s to Egypt? I mean like F-16s to Egypt. Okay, now are you willing to listen to the counterpoint? I'm willing to listen to anything. Okay, here's my counterpoint. Those politicians, okay, who are currently in the system are looking out for their own behinds. That's why they got to go. That, but that's, that is their motivation, okay? So hear me out. They're, that's their motivation. You put enough people sitting on the ground in the places you're talking about for a long enough period of time, and if for no other reason than self-preservation of their position... But they'll modify no, their, no, only they, behavior, they, no, their behavior not, only long enough to get you out of their hair. See, that I... That you could, you, we can argue that, okay, but it will in fact modify their behavior. But the problem is that they've already passed so much stuff that there, it's impossible to ex- extricate ourselves from the morass of of legislation that has already caused us to be under this this 
position of oppression. It's already there. You can't... In other words, ladies and gentlemen, look. The only way that we are ever going to straighten this out is to take this nation back by massive peaceful civil disobedience and immediately disband that which has been our oppressor. And what that is called is literally thousands upon thousands upon thousands of administrative agencies that are passing laws like a hundred page law that, that specifies the rules and regulations required to produce and sell and deliver a ceiling fan. Like the restrictions that are placed on, look, blow open the free market, allow farmers to grow what they want, where they want, how they want, utilize their land in the proper way, get the hell off of everybody's back, stop taxing us to death, stop oppressing us with all of these abusive rules and regulations, which for all intents and purposes have stifled and are strangling the economic investment made by corporations and individuals in this nation. You mean let the free market be free? God forbid we actually allow free enterprise to be enterprising. Stop guaranteeing monopolies by government fiat and allow the nation to actually have an opportunity to grow. Stop dictating who can, gr who can drill for what oil where. We have enough oil to last this nation the next thousand years. And instead, what we're doing is we're, bu we're selling it at $80 a barrel from our own reserves that we do drill, and we're buying it back from foreigners at $100 a barrel. And you know what that's doing? Wait it's a minute, siphoning can... money and resources away from the American population. And it's with willful intent and insidious intent. You know, I can do the math on that, and that ain't good. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Mike, it's Mike, and I have to uh, recommend a, a film, a movie for people to watch that is in the vein of your discussion this morning. And it's been out for a while. I, I'm just kind of like coming to the table. Netflix finally got it. Atlas Shrugged Part 2, I saw the other night. Yeah. Uh, it provides a great deal of inspiration. I actually recommend people read the book. And well, I'll the, tell you the, why. The book is much, much better. But in our, our culture, people aren't going to take the time. Well, that's their problem, though. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm tired of Americans saying, well, I don't like to read. I don't give a damn whether you like to read or not. It's time you got down off your high horse of self-indulgence and said, I'm going to do what I have to do as a patriot and study to show myself approved. Well, they should read the book, but if they get a chance to watch the movie, that might inspire them, and it's on Netflix. It's, it's really... I pre I, I'm, I'm sorry, but the, you know, it just it boggles my mind that Americans will sit there and say, well, I don't have any time to read. No, that's because you're sitting there in front of the indoctrination box being told what to think, and it's telling you don't read. Because, God forbid, that's why slaves were barred from reading, America. Because a slave who was educated was a slave who would revolt. And Think true. about it for a minute. True. You know? And so what they're telling you is don't think for yourself, don't critically think, don't have reason, don't utilize this magnificent logic that we have which separates us from the animals. Don't use reason. Let's just be these mindless lemmings that are told what to do and march straight ahead and when you see the edge of the cliff, just keep following the guy in front of you. That is true. That's, That's true. you know, I, I'm, and I get the whole idea, but I, I got to tell you, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a big reader. And, and you know what? There is nothing that replaces reading. Nothing. Nothing at all. I was an English major, so... Because even when you're watching the movie, you're still not getting the true intent and the true principles and concepts and underlying in the ideas beneath, beneath the layers of, of film. What you're getting is someone's interpretation of what the author meant. And that can never be qualified or quantified in the same way that the author, in, author intended you to absorb it. So... A lot of times, uh, I think that the things we're doing, that so many of us are doing to try to fight back, are great, but that all we're doing is a fighting a holding action. I get it. I mean, like I say every day, you know, I feel like I'm sitting here holding back a tsunami, uh, you know, a, a thousand foot high tidal wave with a with a with a teacup. I mean, I get it, you know, and I know I'm one small voice in the wilderness screaming my lungs out. Never, you know, half the populace is looking at me like I'm completely off the charts and nuts. And the other half of the populace is looking at me saying, well, I understand, but, you know, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it gets down in the end to you have to take responsibility for yourself. You have well, to be able to take care of yourself and your family. And, and you know what taking responsibility incorporates? Educating yourself, 
and showing that you have taken the time and put forth the effort to show yourself approved. Yes. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Appreciate you. Go ahead, caller. Yes, uh, I absolutely agree. Reading is the key to that. To refuse to be educated is to acknowledge slavery. Uh, it's the basis for slavery. I mean, yes. turn your radio down. It's the basis. It's the it's the basis for slavery. Slaves were barred from reading for one reason and one reason only. A man who was educated was a man who would recognize that there was a place for him beyond that of that his master gave him. And that's the reason why our t our schools don't teach critical thinking. That's the reason why our schools are dumbing our students down with the concept that it's more about the collective and the benefits to the collective than it is about you as an individual. That you should sacrifice and pillory yourself on the altar of altruism rather than stand up and, and, and stand on your two feet like a man was intended to do. And those are, those are the foundational precepts and principles that God and nature have given us. We, we've got this brilliance that is called reasoning, and it's the sentience to understand self-evaluation, right? And God gave us that. Nature has given us that. That's what separates us from the wolf or the elephant or the, or the dog. And the truth of the matter is that unless we're willing to use that, we're no more than that dog who's willing to sit there and love his master no matter how abusive it is. Exactly right. You're willing to be trained like a dog for a specific task, and that's all you're ever going to do. And, and if, that's the, if, if that's the future you envision for yourself, because dinner always appears at 7 o'clock, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, really. I, you know, I tell you what, let me die with my boots on, pointed toes up, rather than that kind of nonsense. I ain't living that way. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, got, you, you have to wonder about, in the black community, the refusal to, to you know... Accept responsibility for down, themselves? Yeah. To accept responsibility for themselves and stop blaming it on everybody else? Yeah. When 91% of all murders on black men are black men? 91%, ladies and gentlemen. So don't tell me there's a racist problem in the United States of America. The number one racist problem is blacks who hate blacks. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with race. And almost one-sixth of the prison population. Well, I, I, I will tell you something, and I'll disagree with you on the prison population issue. There is... An, there is a, a a disproportionate level of prosecution of blacks versus whites. So I'm going to stand with them on that issue. But, <laughs> but everybody. I, but I'm not going to. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit there and 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 you know bite my lip while I I recognize that you know the vast majority of this liberal progressive mentality wants us to flagellate ourselves over this concept that we're all white racists at heart, deep deep down inside. The simple truth of the matter is there are more racists in this nation who are black than there are racists who are white. And yep. I'm tired of hearing that only whites can be racist. You know, Communist News Network portrays Zimmerman as a white Hispanic. If that doesn't tell... First of all, show me any Hispanic who has ever classified themselves as a white Hispanic. Not none I know. They're all pretty proud of their race. Actually. Exactly. In fact, they don't call themselves white. They call themselves brown. So let's stop with the nonsense, and let's stop with the self-hating flagellation of the progressive liberal movement, right? Whose sole goal, by the way, is to have you so completely emasculated that you will stand there and accept any kind of job they tell you to do. That's to really what it's about. To divide us and Congress. Absolutely. Using the differences. Thanks, brother. Yep, bye. You know, folks, I'll tell you what. It is time for America to say, I've had enough of the nonsense, the political correctness, the lies being fostered upon me, being taught to my children, being being ripped our, our entire foundation and our and our entire culture being ripped out from underneath us by a few self hating individuals who, for whatever purposes they 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 aspire, would seek to have you be so emasculated, so you know, we're all looked upon as potential eunuchs to be slaves to the entire system, to be self-sacrificial lambs who will pillory ourselves on the altar of altruism. It's shameful, it's degrading, it's inhumane, and it's unconscionable. And I, for one, have just about had enough of it. I don't want to hear any political PC crap. 
I want people to call it like it is. I want somebody to have the brass to stand up and say exactly what's going on. And that's why I do this program. Because I've been standing around watching for the last 30 or some odd years of my life, and nobody, nobody has had the courage to stand up and say exactly what's up. Everybody wants to pretend the elephant isn't really in the room standing on our feet and we're bending down to look between his legs under his swagging belly. Let me tell you something. There is an elephant in the room. He's huge. He's heavy. He's standing on our feet. And it's time that we acknowledged it. And then that requires that we then do something about it. And that's the reason why vast majorities of America would rather sit around and pretend that this isn't really happening. But I'm going to tell you something. The day comes by when your paycheck stops flowing, when your Social Security check stops, when your government pension check stops, and then you're going to want to rise up. The problem is, guess what? You've allowed their plan to come to its full fruition and culmination, and you are now too late. Now it will resort to a bloody anarchy. Because you refuse to accept the reality of what was going on right underneath your nose. Basing, it, basing your entire hopeful vision on the fact that somebody's going to find some integrity somewhere. Let me tell you something. There is no integrity. No one up there has any. Capitol Hill has the least integrity. I tell you what, you could find more integrity in a swamp in Louisiana than you can find on all of Capitol Hill. There is no integrity. There is no honor. There is no righteousness. There is no truthfulness. There is no sacrifice. Their only sacrifice is you for their purposes and their ideology, their goals, their belief systems, and their elitist ego. They know better than you. You are supposed to be quiet, silent, and acquiescent. And your silence is agreement. It's time for you to stop worrying about becoming a member of a list and say, damn the list, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead, battle stations, everyone. And until you're willing to do that, this nation will con continue to descend into anarchy and tyranny. And I promise you, at the end of that day, your pension, your lifestyle, your property, your possessions, your dreams, your hopes, and your aspirations will be dashed to pieces. And then you will have nothing left with which to fight. You will have nothing left from which to rise up with. The simple truth is you have completely abdicated to them all of your... We don't need anybody to repeal the Bill of Rights. You've allowed them to do it with immunity and impunity. Every American who is sitting here, who is sitting here in either on the government dole in one way, shape, or form or another, or expecting to be, or is acquiescing to the demands, has already acknowledged they are our master. Please, master, stop beating me. What that tells me is that you believe that the master has the right to do that. And that tells me you are not a patriot. You are not a man or a woman of bravery or integrity or honor yourself. Because if you were, you wouldn't be falling for that nonsense. You'd be willing to stand up and say, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Ladies and gentlemen, you determine your own fate. And you're your only advocate. There are, there are no lawyers that are going to step up and save your butt from this from this tyranny. There's no one who's going to step up and preserve you in a court. The courts are corrupted and they're compromised just like Washington, just like the administration, just like literally hundreds of thousands and millions upon millions of federal workers who have been corrupted. They'll sit there and do exactly what they're told as long as they get their paycheck at the end of the day. And they don't care whose toes, whose financial pockets, whose freedoms they got to step on to accomplish that goal. It's not about what's right for this nation. It's not about what's right for my kids. It's all about what's in it for me. And ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, if that is your sole principle, if that is your sole concept, you and I got nothing further to talk about. 
you may as well go find yourself another radio station because we got nothing to discuss. If you will not fight for the right when you can easily win without bloodshed, if you will not fight when your victory will be sure and not too costly, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. There may even be a worse case. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it is better to perish than live as a slave. That ain't Michael. That was Winston. And if you're unwilling to acknowledge and understand the depth of where we have fallen, that's on you. But I got to tell you, it's willful. So make no mistake about it. Ignorance of our situation is no excuse. Ignorance of the law, as convoluted and twisted and as manipulated as it's become, that's excusable. Ignorance of our, of our situation, our standing, and our inevitable end, that, ladies and gentlemen, is inexcusable. Because at this point, you're already, you've already got the guilty knowledge. And that makes all the difference. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. You can find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. You can find our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. You can find this and every other program that we do on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. Please make sure that you visit those pages. Make sure that you support our sponsors and make sure that you are uh, patronizing them. They're the folks that keep this show on the live and on the air every day. We'll be back in a few minutes. We're going to take a quick break for the top of the hour. We'll come back, and when we do come back, we're going to talk about the transatlantic issues. Quarters for getting and being prepared, natural disasters, civil unrest, personal and family protection, long-term sustenance, and most importantly, peace of mind. Berkey bottles and home-size water purification systems.